This thing is way cool. This here is elephant apple, and elephant apple is a popular fruit in northeastern India, and apparently it's also sometimes eaten where I am right now in Thailand. I picked this up in Bangkok, and uh, it's called elephant apple because it's a food that elephants eat. People eat it, elephants eat it, and there's a bit of controversy about it because so many people like to eat this thing, sometimes it takes away from the natural food supply of wild elephants in India. So it is illegal to pick this thing unless it's in a certain zone. I have reviewed this in the past, however when I did it, uh, footage wasn't that great. The camera wasn't very good that I had back then, the lighting wasn't very good in the room I was in, and uh, the noise was uh, something to behold because I did this in Guwahati, India and uh, there's a lot of traffic there. But, yeah, stop, stop. It's not doing anything, dude, no, okay. People just like, like wail on their horns for no reason. I mean, I guess like to make people aware that they're there, but it's not to make someone go faster. There's no going faster, which is like really annoying when you're trying to sleep. But I decided to switch it up a little bit and try it a little differently. This is more ripe than the one I had before. People usually pick it green. I wanted to get one that was getting a little bit more uh, color to it. So this one is more yellowish with some brown spots on it. And I'm thinking maybe that's going to make it have like a stronger flavor in this state. I also want to try eating it a different way. And this uh, way that I'm going to eat it was inspired by these YouTube channels where it's like somebody's community in a village somewhere, like a tribal community, and they eat some sort of interesting food and they prepare it. Like, I hate these videos because like, I mean, they're beautiful. What they're doing is so interesting, but they're always dead silent. They never explain what they're doing. say something like don't don't just eat it and tease me like tell me what it tastes like so I want to find out what that tastes like so uh, yeah, let's open it up cutting open an elephant apple is no easy task because these things are very hard they are made out of like petals so as you can see here like the fruit actually separates into these little petals I could probably like rip one off if I really tried and uh, it's also quite slimy in there so cutting into that, you have to be careful because you might, you know, slide and uh, lose a finger. So I'm going to very carefully try to do this with a pocket knife, which is not a great idea. Because it's overripe, this is actually easier to cut into. So there you go. That's good. And as you do that, look at that. The cross-section of this thing is amazing. It looks like something that is from a different planet. So cool. Nature is amazing, guys. And the smell that's coming off of this is quite nice. It actually has like a apple-y and maybe guava-ish kind of smell to it. Very aromatic. This thing is way cool. Uh, last time I did this, I cut it the other way, and I just kind of like hacked away at it. But uh, being able to cut it straight through, it looks like some like alien lotus flower or something. Real cool. Really, really cool. And how people eat this is they'll eat both the, uh, the little flappy bits here on the outside, but also the fruit on the inside. So first I'm going to try just one of the little flaps on its own. Hmm. Better than last time. I'm not sure exactly how to describe that. Kind of like a green apple, but a really fresh, nice green apple. Maybe a bit of um, guava taste. It also has like a little bit of uh, an acidity to it that reminds me of, like the, the acidity from pineapple. 
So yeah, green apple, guava, pineapple. It's a little bit funky. When I had it unripe, it was even funkier, but when it's ripened up a little bit more, less funky, more fruity. And it's giving me a little bit of a heat sensation. Not sure what that's about. Probably the poison. Uh, <laughs> I think there might actually be some uh, like acid in here like the acid in pineapple. You know, like acid in pineapple can kind of give you like a little bit of a burning sensation. Feeling it kind of like that. Hmm. Didn't get that before either. Alright, so let's try it the way that they do in the videos and put some salt and chili powder on it. There we go. Looks good. That's really good! Letting this ripen more is a good idea. It's got a nicer flavor. The elephants are totally onto something, guys. Elephant apple is good. I'm not sure if I liked it last time. I want to just take a little bite of the raw uh, petal bit. Um, it's okay. Interesting. I can see that being really good if you cook with it, but eating it out of hand is, um... But like this, that's nice. Nice tropical taste. It is, however, very fibrous. So, I don't want to swallow that. Uh, I'm gonna, huh, blech. Remove that off camera, because that's gross. But, yeah, flabby bits, good. Let's, uh, uh, that can be taken out of context. So the petals on the outside, really good. But what about the fruit on the inside? Let's, uh, ooh, you know, I think I can actually get this out in one piece. Right? Yeah. It's just, like, held in there. Look at that. What a beautiful fruit. You know, it looks kind of ugly from the outside, but once you cut into it, this thing is really cool. Really cool looking fruit. One gross thing about it, though, is that uh, it is kind of slimy. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm getting like little slime trails off of it with my finger. Hmm. That part I don't like as much. Ugh, it's kind of boogery, first of all. I mean, bite into it, and come. Look at these little snail trails. Ugh, off your, off your lips when you're chewing it. Um, and the flavor isn't as good. It's similar to the outside, but far less flavor, interestingly enough. You know, often it's the other way around, where like the fruit might taste like the peel, but the fruit's gonna be better than the peel. In this case, the peel is better than the fruit on the inside. One nice thing about the fruit on the inside, though, is the texture. It is nice and crispy. Easier to eat, I guess, but altogether, outer bit, a lot better. Uh, I like this a lot more today than I did yesterday, guys, and uh, best thing about it is just what that, I mean, it's oxidizing pretty hardcore now, but still, looks awesome. Really cool looking fruit. Elephants like it, and you should too. I'm back in New York City, and I have found frozen elephant apple. I have never seen this before. Uh, this is something that I found in the back of the freezer, in the frozen section, at a very well-stocked Indian grocery store. What elephant apple is typically used for is to make uh, pickles. And if you look online for recipes for elephant apple, the number one thing that's gonna come up is making pickles. And when I say pickles, I mean like Indian pickles or from the Indian subcontinent pickles, uh, what you would call a char, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, not like cucumber pickles in the US. Uh, Indian pickles, I love Indian pickles. In fact, I have one, two, three, different types of achar in my refrigerator. The commercial variety that you'll find that's got like uh, lemons and uh, unripe mango in it. This one is the same sort of thing, but it's uh, locally made, so it's not with preservatives. They just uh, make it somewhere here in New York. 
And uh, this one is actually not Indian. This is a Sri Lankan achar. And this one is a little bit different. <coughs> Breathing in the spice from it is already making me cough. Uh, this one is a little bit different because it's more vinegary. Very good. I love achar. This is the elephant apple achar. I do not love this. I do not love this. I think it is okay, but um, a lot of the flavor of the elephant apple is gone. You just kind of taste spices, and it's also like a different sort of experience. It's more of a uh, sweet. And you can also see it's very fibrous in there. It does retain the elephant apple fibrousness, but the flavor... Well, done spit out the fibers. Um, the flavor of that is fine, but it's very different. It's not as intense. You do get some heat from it and some flavor from it, but it's all from the spices in it, not from the fruit that is in there. And this also is very sweet, so um, you have to think about like what you're going to put it on because it's going to add the like, sugar into whatever you're eating. So I'm not like the biggest fan of it. Not the biggest fan of it. So I'm not going to make elephant apple pickles. I'm going to make something else. And uh, the second most popular thing that I was able to find to use elephant apple for is uh, elephant apple doll. So you make a you know, like a lentil curry that uses this. And I think that would be pretty interesting. I think that's gonna be a mild enough sort of flavor where the flavor of the elephant apple will come out. So uh, let's do it. And one thing to point out about the frozen elephant apple is that if you look in there, see that? This is just the petals, okay? It is not the inner pulp of the fruit. Just the petals are typically what are used in cooking. Uh, some people in the past have criticized me for eating the inner part of the fruit and um, said that the inner part is not edible. I think it is. You know, there are plenty of resources online that say that the inner pulp is edible. I believe you can eat the inside, but people don't usually eat the inside. Cool? Okay, so let's make some dal. Here it is. So uh, typically this is a very thin dal. I made mine thicker because I prefer it that way. But if you want it thinner, you just add more water to it, basically. So uh, in order to do this, I took uh, red lentils, I cooked those, set those aside. Then I prepared a spice mixture called panch porin. And panch porin has uh, fennel seeds, cumin seeds, black mustard seeds, nigella seeds, and fenugreek seeds, equal parts of all of them. I mixed those together, made a little spice mix, took one tablespoon of that and put it in the um, in some oil to let it you know, wake up the spices. I also put in some dry red chili in there. Uh, the oil that people typically use is mustard oil. Mustard oil actually in the United States is illegal. You can buy it for like cosmetic purposes or cosmetic purposes but you can't buy it for food use. So sometimes when you see it um, at a supermarket, it'll say for external use only on it and people will still buy it and cook with it. Uh, I want to make sure that if I'm buying it, I'm buying the proper stuff uh, just in case I am getting something that is of a lower grade that's not food grade. So uh, I decided to just use reg regular vegetable oil, but typically people do use mustard oil. Uh, so I cooked all that together with an onion. After that, sweated a bit. I added some uh, garlic, minced up really fine, and ginger. After a minute or two, I added some water and then the elephant apple. Now I let this mixture cook for 15 minutes. And along the way, the water kept evaporating, so I kept adding more water to it. That way it wouldn't burn. And one thing I also did is I took a potato masher and I mashed up the elephant apple as it was cooking. 
So that cooked for 15 minutes. Then I added the lentils into this mixture, add a little bit of water so it'd be the right consistency, and then I let that cook for another 15 minutes on a low heat. And that gave me this. All right, so I've got some rice. I got a couple pieces of the elephant apple. Let's go. It's good. It's good. Um, I'm not sure how much the elephant apple is contributing to the fact that this is good, but it is good. Uh, let me try some of the lentils just on their own. The spice mixture that I put in there was good. Uh, the elephant apple doesn't really blend in with the rest of the curry though. So it has a flavor, but I get that flavor when I get a piece of the elephant apple, not when I eat the curry on its own. Um, maybe a little bit, but it doesn't really add much flavor to the curry itself. It is just little pieces of flavor mixed in with the curry. And uh, the flavor of the elephant apple here... Excuse me. <laughs> Gotta spit out these fibers. So that's kind of a negative, is that the elephant apple is very fibrous. I'm not sure if people swallow that or not. I feel like that's probably not a great thing to swallow too much of. So I'm spitting out fibers. Uh, the flavor of the elephant apple, although it doesn't integrate so much with the lentils, when you eat a bite of it, the flavors do go. So it more like mixes together in your mouth and those flavors go. And I think one of the big flavor combinations that works here is the elephant apple with ginger because the elephant apple is very uh, bright it's a very bright lemony kind of uh, tart flavor maybe a little like green apple a little bit like uh, pineapple a little bit like uh, like lemon and that I think pairs really well with ginger so this is an interesting experience because Excuse me, I know it's gross, but you know, this is the reality, guys. <laughs> you wanna know what this is like? That is what it's like. Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of a learning curve to this. You gotta get used to the fact that you're gonna be eating something that you have to spit out the fibers of, but if you get past that, it's, um, it's pretty nice, it's pretty nice. It's nothing too crazy, though. I think that the elephant apple, actually on its own, when it's raw, has a more interesting flavor than when you cook it. Maybe it's because I used a frozen one or like whatever, but uh, the flavor here is not as uh, complex as the raw one. Uh, it's a little bit more just like a, a tart, mild flavor rather than something that has like this extra funky background flavor the way the fresh one does, which I like. I like that about it and you kind of lose that when you cook it. So that is about it for the elephant apple. This is a very, very cool fruit. I think how it tastes when it's cooked is good. How it tastes when it is raw, in my opinion, even better. But the coolest thing about it is how it looks. This thing is just wild on the outside and you cut it open and it's even wilder on the inside. It's such like a bizarre looking and interesting fruit and uh, it's definitely something that's worth checking out. I can certainly see why elephants like it so much. So that's it guys. Thank you very much and I will see you all next time. I would like to give a big thank you to Smarter Every Day, Bill T, and Joseph McQuarkle. They are mega patrons on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I keep this channel going. It is a huge help, so thank you. And to anyone watching who is interested in learning more about how you can support the channel and get some really cool bonuses in return, like early access to videos, exclusive videos, there's over a hundred of those. Uh, there's even a level where I will send you things in the mail. You gotta check it out. So check out the link in the description below.